Uh, next question is how are you approaching or how did you approach the practice uh, for Python slash programming to modify exploits? This is a, it's a bit of a sideways question. Okay, do you want the longer version or the shorter version of it? Let's go the longer version, but not too long, <laughs> if possible. Okay, okay. I'll try to, uh, to be like... Right, I've got a drink, so <laughs> take your time. Okay, so uh, it was actually Python that got me into cybersecurity. So I started learning like Python a couple of years ago, started teaching myself Python, maybe it was 2015, I guess. And as I got into Python and then Linux stuff, it kind of naturally progressed into cybersecurity. So um, to make a long story short, uh, how do I approach or what was it? How, um, uh, how did you approach the practice for Python slash programming to modify exploits? Okay, so when I looked into exploits, for example, like uh, let's say I was doing a machine when I was practicing on Hack the Box or if I'm doing challenges on Attack Defense Labs, which seems a far more realistic uh, platform in terms of uh, real world scenarios compared to Hack the Box and other platforms, um, it kind of progresses naturally if you're doing if you've been doing python for a couple of years and you have developed some sort of automation in your thinking when it comes to programming such as loops conditional statements and stuff like that when you're looking into a python exploit and you understand what the type of exploit is doing uh, of course you don't have to know any line of code what what's happening at every line of code but you would be you would know where and what to modify in order to make your exploit work because more often than not you have to modify some sort of things to actually make the exploit work so i guess it's a matter of practice of or of practicing python um, when it comes to your ability to understand and uh, modify exploits and even develop your own scripts when it comes to penetration testing and bug bounty hunting. That's it. And with those scripts, would you recommend uh, just like automating basic tasks first? So um, say you're writing a script to exploit a specific type of target. Um, would you maybe say, okay, we'll write a script that's going to automate as much of that process as possible and just because it's an easy way to learn, do you think that would, you know, be something that's quite useful in the real world? Yeah, it is. Uh, like, for example, what I'm doing in bug bounty hunting, uh, there is a lot of automation that you can build, build into the recon process, which is one of the first uh, steps when you're assessing a target which has a bug bounty program. So, for example, in um, let's take let's say yahoo.com for example when you're doing recon there are a lot of uh, uh, tools that are already made for recon yeah. so let's say for example you have tools for subdomain brute forcing you have tools for looking into wayback machine you have tools for doing dns stuff if you know a little bit of python or bash for example uh, you can actually put those tools together into a script and even automate the process even further. Or you can build your own stuff from scratch, which I wouldn't actually go for it because there are so many good tools for subdomain brute forcing, for example. Why, why would I reinvent the wheel? There's literally it, it thousands be, on GitHub, yeah. <laughs> you can yeah, pick and it choose. Might yeah. be a good, it might be a good exercise for your coding skills, but if you want to get stuff done, I'd rather be practical than uh, super, uh, not necessarily methodical, but I'd rather be practical than instead of than reinventing the wheel, like I said. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. 